Hello everyone, my name is Marcelo Valau. I'm the Forage Extension Specialist for the University of Florida. And we are here at the McGeehy's Farm in Alachua County with uh, <coughs> Mr. William McGeehy and my colleagues, Dr. Cindy Sanders and Dr. Kevin Chorus. Let's go for a little round of introductions. Hi, I'm Cindy Sanders. I'm the Extension Director and Livestock Agent in Alachua County. And hello, I'm Kevin Porras. I'm the Agricultural Row Crop um, Extension Agent for Alachua County. I'm William McGeehy. I'm the local farmer. Last week we had, uh, we had a, they have a farm visit with uh, also Joel Love, which is the BMP coordinator out in Live Oak. And you came here to take a look at this, uh, at this pasture. And what did you see here when you, when you got when you got here last week? So we were here a week ago, exactly last week, and we had Sorghum Sudan chest high. Um, we had some sun hemp, um, which was about that tall and fixing to bloom. So um, we expected it this week to be, well, I knew he was going to put the cows on and graze last week when we here hadn't grazed it yet, but I was expecting to see some sun hemp yellow blooms. The cows have been on here a week. So you're looking now at about average knee high on all our forages um, versus last week we were about chest high. Thanks to Joel for putting this blend together for us, but we got cow peas for, and lots of legumes, sun hemp, sunflowers, uh, we've got the sorghum sudan, um, buckwheat, stonewall, uh, soybeans, and I think that's all of them. Uh, the sun hemp, most of the works when you when you take a look at the whole plant, uh, the leaf and stem, they, they just, the crude protein will be around 11 to 18 percent, 15 percent, but when you look and the digestibility will be 55, 60 50, 50 to 60 percent but when you look at the leaves only animals stripping the leaves and this has a very very high nutritive value and animals really like it yeah I don't uh, to me three or four different species seems to work better than a, just a whole bunch of them because you get unintended you know competition between them if you get too many so the cowpeas and the sun hemp are adding nutrients are adding nitrogen to the soil uh, the cowpeas are lower growing as the soybeans are lower growing versus the, the sun hemp and the pearl millet that are going to be taller growing so you have different niches of production here and everything is filled so you get the most out of it. When you start putting many species that compete with each other then you reduce productivity of both because you don't have resources sun, water, uh, nutrients and wherever you don't have the resources to feed uh, both species so end up reducing so that's very important when thinking about what species uh, you're going to use on those mixtures when we're thinking about planting legumes legumes are very important for biological nitrogen fixation but the biological nitrogen fixation only occurs because there is an interaction between the bacteria a rhizobium and the plant uh, some soils do have natural uh, bacteria that will inoculate and nodulate those plants, but many places don't. And there is many plants that are also specific. That's why it's a very cheap insurance. It's about $6 for a little bag that will do a bag of seeds or even more than that. A little pouch of peat inoculant. Very cheap insurance. Inoculate your seeds, make sure that those bacteria are there. Make sure you also buy the right inoculant that is recommended for that species you are planting. Put that on the seeds right before planting, not a day before, not a week before, but right before planting to make sure those bacteria are live and viable and planted. And the result is very interesting. So this is the roots of a cowpea that was planted here, inoculated, and you can see the several little nodules those are those nodules host bacteria that will fix nitrogen for the plant so it's a symbiotic relationship the plants provide uh, carbon and energy for the bacteria the bacteria provides nitrogen for the plant and the interesting thing is just having nodules in it is not enough you need to make sure they are active and when you cut them open, they have this, they have this reddish color. 
and this reddish color means that it's active. Uh, there is a substance called lag hemoglobin that prevents oxygen to get into the site of action on the end, the, the nitrogen where it's being fixed. Because the, the reaction to fix nitrogen is anaerobic and the bacteria is aerobic. So the bacteria needs oxygen, but the reaction to fix the nitrogen cannot have oxygen. So it's pretty interesting how it goes. So this is basically a plant infection, but it's a beneficial one. And so we're in William's perennial peanut fields and we've got three different varieties here and we just kind of wanted to show the difference between the varieties and talk to William a little bit about his establishment. So William, tell us first of all what three varieties we have and... and yeah. Well, on the far side where you can see the bloom, that's the old standby floor graze. Been growing it for probably 25 years. And the last year, I had an opportunity to get some plant material from the newer varieties, and we sprigged them in, in early March. And this here's the piece, and over here we have the pedo. You really can't tell much difference now, but last year, as they were both establishing themselves, the piece seemed like the dominant one, and I was just real thrilled with it. And I was kind of disappointed in the Tito. But now this spring, when they came out, they're, they both look equally well. And I've cut both of these sections one time, but the piece did out yield the, the Tito almost double on the first cutting. But it's, they both look real well now. And I have a section over here on that hilltop of the Tito that was cut approximately a month ago. And it is already regrew to approximately 10 inches tall and it's ready to cut again. I haven't seen anything any difference as far as disease wise goes so far. But I did last year on the floor graze for the first time ever. I could have um, potentially seen a benefit from spraying for worms. I had some army worms get in the others and, it, and they actually got bad enough I wish I would have sprayed for them. Mm -hmm. So that's something I've never seen before. The piece is a lot more visually appealing hay than the Tito is. Really? It's, it's greener, the leaves are prettier, you know, in their appearance in the hay. Mm -hmm. The Tito, the leaves, they curl bad and they turn and they turn, turn brown. Quicker. I think establishment is the hardest part of perennial peanut and um, yes. the cost also scares a lot of people away. Yeah, it's, it's very expensive. It's not cheap to establish. So if you establish it, you, you 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 better be on your game and ready to go with it. Don't don't haphazard, you know, think, well, I'm just going to plant it and forget it. In a couple of years, it'll be hay, so you'll have a wheat patch.